Right, okay, May, nearly. I'm posting this a little bit early. Um, let's have a look at deliberately letting water into the boat by replacing the paddle wheel on the impeller whilst uh, Serenity is still in the water. Bit scary. Um, followed by an actual sail with all sails up, proper wind, um, and nothing broke, which is the first time I think it's the first, first time nothing broke. That's a, this is a, yeah, anyway. And then just finish off with just a little look, something that I've put on my to-do list and my, my wish list anyway at the end of it. So let's start off. I had actually, the log wasn't working when I first went out, the impeller. I keep calling it the impeller, by the way. Sorry about that. It's actually the paddle wheel, but throughout the rest of this, I will call it the impeller. So let's let's do that from now. The, um, the impeller, the, the log wasn't working. So when I went out for the engine test, I didn't know how fast it was going. I did actually take it out and there was a bit of a sort of stick or seaweed or st stump, something stuck in it. Um, and you kind of take it out while the boat's still in the water and that was a little bit scary. I didn't manage to video that properly, but I thought I'd actually video uh, the replacing of it. Really, really scary and I couldn't find anything else on YouTube and I didn't know whether it was possible. I didn't know whether I was gonna sink or what was gonna happen. But anyway, look at it and enjoy. So yeah, let's let's have a look at how that went then. So this is this is the thing I've been uh, procrastinating about. <coughs> I'm going to actually replace the paddle wheel on the log impeller. So basically, this is the impeller in in here. Um, that goes through the hull, and there's a little blanking cap that you sort of pop on quickly. Now, when I first did this, I thought there was going to be something to stop the water coming in quite so quickly, but there wasn't, so it came in quite quickly. So I had the big shock of that, but boy, did I move fast to get this back on. Um, I meant to film it, but I didn't, because I forgot to switch on the um, the GoPro, so I thought it was all filmed. Um, and now, of course, now that I know what's going to happen, I'm actually more nervous than I was before, but let's give it a go, see what happens. Ah, right, 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 right. Oh, actually, that was, oh God, I've got fish. Um, oh, that's interesting. Now, this is interesting. This bit is broken. Just one of the sides is, is broken. Something snapped off there. And my kind of theory is that it was it's reading about half speed. That would make sense, because I'm guessing that there's a, there was a piece of metal in there that kind of triggers it. And it's only on one side. So if I put the new one in, um, yeah, that would make absolute sense if it's because um, it's only counting it once every revolution, whereas it ca should count it. It's expected to count it twice every revolution. That's going to be interesting. So right, I'm going to replace that, uh, put it back in, and see what happens. So this is the this is the new impeller, and you can probably see it's got two sort of full lugs on either side. So that. I'm guessing there's sort of um, some ferrous material in there and that spins around and it's only been counting once every um, every revolution rather than twice. Right, um, time to put it back in. There's a little, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little arrow pointing forward there, I guess that points forward so we need to make sure that goes in that direction. That spins around fine, that's the new impeller and mustn't get complacent just because I haven't sunk the boat twice. It's not nice though letting water into your boat, it's kind of unnatural, although there is a little fish thing that came in somewhere, so we'll have a tea tonight. Okay. So there we are, full of water, 
which is not bad. I don't know how much she's got in there, but I can probably go and get the pump. And there's the there's a GoPro sitting up to its knees. Oops, there's a GoPro sitting up to its knees in water. Well, I think that would be called a resounding success, which is quite rare. Um, so the nice thing is the more you do this stuff, the either the easier it gets, the better you get, or I don't know, perhaps it's just the law of averages, the less stuff goes wrong. But did it work? So we had a nice day. I was literally just getting the lines up. I went and, and spoke to a, a colleague who we, we, we had a lot of chats about um, engine stuff because until I replaced my Yamaha with a Beetle, we both had the same sort of engine. So we're sort of engine buddies. And he was about to do something, but I said, do you want to do your fancy come out for a quick sale? At first he said no. And then just as I was about to slip the lines, he kind of came running over wearing his, his life jacket. So it's really useful actually going out with two people. So thank you very much for that, Simon. That was very much appreciated um, and it was a lovely sale so let's have a look and see how that went. Do you want to be on my YouTube channel Simon? Um, you can do if you like yeah. Look at that, so posh I've hired somebody to steer the boat. There you go. <laughs> if I win the lottery I will buy a yacht. We're bang on east here then so east is east. That's the um, that's the course across, um, I don't know what they call it, they call it, um, oh I forgot the, the pirate name for it. Um, Bay. Yeah, I've looked for fossils there, I didn't find any. What's it doing? 4.4 knots, listen to that. So the impeller's working. So you can edit this. So I, I'm not expecting the top of <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> Suck my wake. It's a lovely bit of... We're going now. 4.8 4 knots. Lovely. That's, that's just exactly perfect. <laughs> no, this is perfect. So I've not sailed a bilge keeler before, so I think that's what's given that. What? How is she? I thought it was a bilge keeler. There is a, there is a bilge version. Ciao very much. So yeah, the impeller worked and my theory, it's not very often that you have a theory about these things and it actually works out. I'm absolutely astonished, that was brilliant. So yeah, it was reading about half speed and that now everything kind of makes sense. So really, 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 really pleased about that. Um, one of the things from the previous sail, even with no, no wind that I noticed, is that it's such a pain on your own taking the sails down, they kind of all blow over to the side. And I'm kind of collecting things that I want to have to help with single-handed sailing and I really, really want lazy checks. Lazy checks, for those who don't know, are um, people called Jack who don't do very much work, except on occasions what they do do is they help the sail to kind of fold down quite nicely. They're like lines either side of the sail. Um, and I'm definitely going to fit some. So we shall see about that. Now, if you look at the um, down below somewhere on the, the subscriptions that I've sus subscribed to, um, and you look at the sail cancer one, uh, he, and you promised to do this, so he must do it, he's actually doing his own laser check system. So I'm going to follow that, and I'm either going to buy sort of something from Harkin or Luma or, or whoever it is, the people that actually make these things, or actually just do what, do what, what he does. So good luck to you, mate, and um, I hope it goes well because I shall probably copy you. Right, no musical interlude this <coughs> this time because, um, what can I say, I'm just bitten by that bug. But I have literally be in, been inundated with an email. 
Um, so I thought I'd read it out. So there you go. I'm not going to do a regular Q&A session, but this is, this is quite a good one. Um, it's from a Mrs. Trellis of North Wales, um, and she writes, Dear Anton Deck, uh, I wanted to write to say that Going For A Song is my favourite TV programme of all time. It is such a shame that the BBC decided to drop it after 30, over 30 years ago. But they, like you, have completely failed to cover the essential safety question with respect to EPIRBs versus emergency flares. For example, key differences, where should they be stored and when used, etc. Yours faithfully, Mrs Trellis, North Wales. P.S. I can still whistle the theme tune, you know. Um, well, Mrs Trellis, it's a very, very good question and one that does actually cause some confusion. So basically, um, an EPIRB is an emergency position indicating radio beacon used to alert search and rescue services in the event of an emergency. It does this by transmitting a coded message in the 406 megahertz distress frequency via satellite and earth stations to the nearest rescue coordination center. Many people like to keep them on a bracket with a hydrostatic release unit, others in the ditch bag. Whereas, emergency flares are a type of trouser once popular with trendy people, nowadays widely ridiculed, but vital to keep at least one pair in the closet or nearby in case of a last minute 1970s theme party invite. So, I hope that clears all that up and um, see you next time for hopefully some more sailing.